we said, well, well, what should we do with our with our future, right? We were living for a while in Mexico, and like I said, we lived in, in the U.S. And as we were planning our future, we said, well, we got this property down in, 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 in Costa Rica, uh, near the Caribbean, that we could uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, I guess the beer thing definitely was the first thing in mind. That, hey, let's start a business there. Let's see how it goes. But the, 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 the beer thing really got to us. It was impressive how, seeing the brew, seeing, tasting the beers, uh, forming part of that community was, was really moving for us. Tierra Libertad, yeah, definitely in Mexico, it's a phrase that, that we hold to heart. And yeah, it, 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 it comes from the Mexican Revolution. I always found it to be a very powerful, powerful phrase. It has a very in-depth in uh, 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 symbolism and, and imagery. Tierra is just the land, the land that we are. For me, that's our tierra. And Libertad is the freedom to brew whatever beer you want, right? Why not? I, I like the double meaning it has. Uh, the, definitely, I planned it out because of the Mexican Revolution. But now I have this other second level that it's just two words and, and, and it defines what we are, right? What we do. For me, it actually, suddenly when we're doing a new recipe and a new beer comes out, that becomes my new favorite. I have to try it and I analyze it and I like it and I dislike it and I see what things that can be, can be done better and whatnot, yeah. Oh, that's always a challenge. That's always a challenge. You, you think you know, but, but, but you don't really know. Uh, I, I do a lot of studying. I do a lot of, uh, you have to plan it out. Uh, my first approach definitely is try to see what ingredient I could get a hold of, right, to make an interesting beer. And, and I guess I, I start building up the recipe around that. We love Belgian uh, style beers. We love, uh, yeah, all that, I guess, Belgian school. So th the next, uh, the next uh, process would be what type of Belgian beer probably that I could do uh, with, this, with this ingredient. I don't see it that, that, that all the Costa Rican beers that play with fruit are, car, are, are called or should be called fruit beers. They, they make the beer even more interesting than what used to be, I guess, a traditional just a fruit addition in a beer, right? We use uh, uh, green mangoes, but probably to bring up more of the sour flavor on a beer, right? And, and because it has this natural acidity taste, right? We're, we're audacious, but try to keep it within style. The fruit addition has to be subtle it has to hints it has to complement and but not overshadow a beer i mean at the end of the day it's a traditional uh, beer recipe and then that's it right we would love to have more hops and there's always tons of stuff that you could do with hops and 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 where you add them and what point and and and, and yeah that's always cool not not necessarily bring big uh ipas or big bitter beers just because of the of the aromas and the flavors right mm -hmm. my main learning of, of the brewing uh process and and brewing beer was in north carolina they actually have a, I would say, a similar approach in, in, in a sense to, to Costa Rica to make uh, the beer local, to make the beer more representative of, of, what, of, of what, you, what you are. Definitely here, because you don't have the access to malts and hops, everything is brought from, from abroad. Uh, it's very important to try to keep it local. Not only is bringing an interesting or a fun ingredient into play in a beer, it's, it's trying to represent your identity. Us being in the Caribbean, you got cacao, you got all, all this amazing uh, acid fruit that plays perfect with Belgians and sours. So, so yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's the reasons uh, uh, that, that thrives us, yeah. Our suppliers are based in San Jose. And yeah, we're three hours and a half from San Jose. Um, so that definitely is a challenge every day. I mean, bringing in the malts, uh, you have to usually do the pickup in San Jose. So you have to drive to San Jose, do the pickup, and then drive back, right? But uh, yeah, when, when we're driving with, with 14 sacks of, of grains and, and you're thinking about the rain, obviously they're, they're covered and there's always a challenge. The, even even hey, the blackberries that we have to bring, I mean, same thing. I mean, uh, you, you bring things frozen because the blackberries are not exactly from this 
area, but uh, in Cartago, obviously near near to San Jose. But yeah, it's always a challenge bringing bringing ingredients down here. Yeah.